the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's going to be a beautiful day that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Okay. A big old squirming worm hanging out down inside of your place. Woo! It's almost as long as you. There we go. Pretty fish. A long slinky job. We'll put you right back in those three pads right there. Okay, go. Have you ever wondered why some fishermen catch more fish than others? Well, <laughs> they seem to pay close and careful attention to what they're doing and what's going on around them while fishing. That alone will definitely help make you a much better fisherman. Your degree of alertness and powers of observation and confidence you have at the moment. You know, if you persist, and what's happening at work, or the yard needs mowing, or what you gotta do next week, or something else, well, you might as well load up and pick another day to fish. Fishing should be fun, and you should be out there enjoying yourself, not worrying about something else. Your concentration on what's taking place around you can tip the scales towards success. You know, catfish, crappie, bluegill, walleye, bass, pike fishing is often opportunity fishing. you got to recognize a set of circumstances and then take advantage of them. You know, a good angler hears as well as he sees, and his mind registers the impression. If, for example, a bass, boom, busts a bait fish on the surface out behind you, his ears should convey the message, even though you're concentrating on cast into a target. The trick is to train your senses to accept the commonplace in nature and seek out the unusual. Tell you what, let's carry the question of sound a step further. Perhaps shad are working on the surface. Your ears register and accept this sound as normal. But a deeper splash, a whoosh, that signals a predator feeding should attract immediate attention. Oh, he got in the pads. I got him out of the pads. He's coming off. A good one, too. Yep, 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 yep. Okay there, buddy. Oh, geez, a good one. You threw? You threw that buster? That big old worm in your face? I'm gonna let you go. All right, now open your mouth. Open your mouth. Okay, come on, come on. That's it, that's it. Got you. There it is. Bit the fire in my finger when I, I guess somebody stuck a hook in my face, I'd bite them too. Ready to go back? Here we go. Bill Dance Outdoors, sponsored by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here.
Rebel. Catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. There we go. Big old worm. Ooh, nice one. Okay, boy. Thank you. Good fishermen are forever able to recall the circumstances surrounding the catching of fish after fish. They seem to remember water depth, water clarity, and temperature, type of lure and color, speed of retrieve, wind direction, weather, and a host of variables. They have total recall of these facts even years later. If I can interpret this uncanny ability, it boils down to concentration and observation. Nothing they do is haphazard. Each piece of the puzzle fits into place in their minds. And when you train yourself to concentrate as thoroughly as they do, well, you're well on your way to becoming a much better fisherman. Now I realize there are a lot of things to think about, but in time, with more experience on the water, even a beginning angler will learn the importance of being observant to every little detail. Okay, here's something you might find interesting. I can't tell you how many times during the course of a year I hear this question. How long should you fish a place before moving on? Beginning bass fishermen seem to be plagued by how long they should work each location. In time, the answer becomes very apparent. But since the question does harbor importance for many anglers, let's talk about it for a minute. Confidence is a key. The moment you've lost confidence in the location, well, it's time to move on, or at least try to regain the confidence. Otherwise, you'll be just going through the motions, but won't have the concentration and thought behind your technique. Normally, you should fish a spot until you've worked it thoroughly at all depths with an assortment of good lures in different sizes and several colors, using variations in your retrieve that might mean a few casts or it may dictate an hour or so. Remember that even the correct lure fished at the incorrect depth or with the wrong retrieve might simply mean that you're doing nothing more than enjoying a day on the water. Where are you going, boy? Where are you going? There he goes right down the side of the boat. That's a big one right there. Look how pretty that fat that fish is. Okay, he's strong. A strong fish. Oh, I'm going to have to come back here and get my hands on your face is what I'm going to have to do. Woo, he's a big, fat, pretty fish. Have you through? Look at this big stomach. that pretty? Okay. Turn you pretty thing. Turn you loose. Bye-bye. We're using Gamakatsu's G Finesse Hybrid Worm Hook. Now what's so special about this hook, you're just not going to miss many fish with it. You can see the hook point is higher than the hook eye. 
So all the force on the hook set is transferred to the hook point, from right here to right here. So you're not gonna miss many fish with it. And the particular worm we're using is Bass Pro Shops 10 inch squirming worm, which is a mighty good worm. We got it rigged with a Bass Pro Shop quarter ounce slip sinker on a Vanish Berkeley fluorocarbon leader. And we're using Berkeley X9 30 pound braid. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reel, Quantum Performance Tuned, Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's Equipment Log is brought to you by Ego Fishing and their all-new S2 Slider Landing Nets with the most advanced handle extension technology. Take the battle to the water with Ego. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Now I'm not trying to sidestep the question about what we were discussing. I'm simply trying to point out the many variables in the answer. As an example, if you were to fish a particular spot regularly, you would soon gain a feel for exactly where the fish should be. The lure to use, the type of the retrieve, even the direction of the retrieve. Now in that situation, you'd probably have a doggone pretty good idea whether the fish were there or not on a given day. You wouldn't be probing because experience has given you a great deal of information about that single spot or small area. Picture yourself, however, on an unfamiliar lake, working a similar location. Now you have some thoughts on where the fish should be, but you'll have to work longer to determine if they're there or not. Anyway, you must consider the degree of confidence and experience you've acquired. The veteran angler can cover an area more quickly than the beginner, simply because he has more experience and he knows most times after fishing the area, He's done the job thoroughly. And none of the boat he goes. Water is clear. If you just shook your head the other way, look at that hook, just right in the bottom lip. Now be careful where I'll catch you. I got you. Oh. Look at the coloration on him. Isn't he pretty? Yes, you are. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Nice, too. God just knew how to paint them up, give them just the prettiest color, the golds and the greens. Yes, he did. Okay. See ya. Let me tell you something. Good, versatile fishermen have a fantastic knowledge about the hot spot on their native lake. They can approach some spots, make a half a dozen casts, and immediately know, or not know, if it's worth fishing that place any longer. Now, let me tell you, if you ever get a chance to fish with an experienced angler, don't pass it up. Ask him lots of questions. Be very observant, and when he tells you where to cast, you better hang on, because that's how well he knows the underwater real estate. I know this has helped me tremendously with my fishing. In my early days, 
I fished with as many knowledgeable fishermen as I could. I asked tons of questions and I tried to be as observant as possible. I want you to get back up on the boat. Nice fish. Here we go. Woo! Nice fish. I had no idea you were that big. <laughs> no idea. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Tuffy. See ya. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. You know, this is a very, very unique system. The fact that uh, it's easy to install and this, this base plate, you just drop it and it goes right to the bottom. So it just creates that arch and pulls that undesirable water back in, the low DO water, and brings it right back into the bubbling system and carries it right back to the surface. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin GPS Map Series Chart Plotter Sonar Combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Pan Optics All Seeing Sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. I do a lot of bass and crappie fishing in the flooded timbered areas, and my 9.9 .9 Mercury on my 14 foot Trekker John boat is perfect for idling down. What this does, it allows me to maneuver around standing timber and cover, and it enables me to get exactly where I want to go very quietly. I simply love it, and it's a perfect outboard for me in those sometimes hard to get to spots. Come be part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Got a piece of lettuce in his mouth. Big old fish too, I know that. There he goes again. What, what he got in his mouth? I saw that thing way out there. Head broke off where he came out of the pads. That's a good doggone hook. Look here. Whoa! Isn't that a fat one? Boy, that's a pretty bass. Well, you had all that stuff down your mouth, didn't you? Yes, you did. There we go. See that stuff, see that old heart shaped stuff? That's called spatter dot. Wherever you find it, it's got a tremendous root system on it. It's not like a lily pad. See it right there? Look at, look at the size of it. Lilies are round. That's heart shaped. And it's got a massive root system on it. It produces a lot of bottom cover. 
and a basket all around it. Sometimes that, that root system is big around as your arm, sometimes it's big around as your leg, but it provides a lot of cover. Gotta hurry before it loud get so oh, what was that? Oh golly, got a good one. Got a mule. I cannot get him. Get out from under the boat. That's a big old fat baby. I gum you. Through. He paddled that tail like a. Look at that. Big old worm. Yeah. That got some power. You are something special. Yes, you are. Well, this outing has really been fun, and like I've said so many times, Experience is the greatest teacher of all. I certainly hope today's show will help you realize that there's nothing like experience when it comes to fishing. Go as often as you can, be observant, ask lots of questions, and before you know it, you'll be catching them like never before. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.